All right, I've decided to come and do it on the bench on a test distributor because it's a lot easier to uh, film uh, than on the boat where it's all angled and everything. All right, so here we have the same distributor that then it's in the boat. This is just a test unit, okay? And watch these these two points over here. They're going to open and close as I rotate this. See there, it's going up and down, up and down as that little heel over there rides on this cam shaft. It's going to keep doing that. It's going to fire, 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 fire. Now, this is basically just a physical switch, all right? This is a point setup. Brakeless ignitions uh, have various ways of performing the, performing the same function. They have a magnetic pickup. They have a little optical eye with a beam. There's various ways for them to kind of signal but this is the old mechanical style it's very reliable anyways so now that the engine is ready to fire we've got it on the compression stroker number one and we've pretty much got the rotor pointing whichever direction it is and I mentioned that you could use a multimeter okay and what you want to do is you can see there okay it's beeping I usually take one and I stick it in the back of this in the spring just to kind of hold it in position that doesn't seem to work very well so I will try it here that'll hold okay and the other ones is going to be on the body all right and and the way to test that you have this correct is that when the points are closed the multimeter is going to beep Okay, I don't even know if these, okay, these points are so set, so out, they're not even closing. Give me one second. Okay, I actually thought I'd demonstrate this. You noticed earlier that it, uh, the points weren't even touching when it was at its lowest. And how you adjust your points gap is this is a lock nut that you can just undo. Just a little bit, and you'll see that there's a slot in there. You could put a flat screwdriver in there. And you can move the points backwards and forwards. So pay attention to these guys right now. You can see that I can move it more open and closed. All right, now you have to be on a high point. So I'm going to rotate it until that heel is on one of these high points over here. As you can see, this is low. That's low over there. This is high. All right. Now I've got a huge points gap in there. I mean, that's about a millimeter and a half. I know that that needs to be about 30 thousandths. So I'm just going to close this gap until it's about as thick as about a piece of matchbox paper. All right. And I'm going to lock this down. Now I know that my points gap, now you could use a feeler gauge, but honestly, I could just eyeball it. All it, all it controls is the saturation time of the coil. Honestly, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 25 thousandths and 45 thousandths. Not in most engines anyway. You can almost just eyeball this. Now this will change your overall timing, but I'm just going through the points. So now, when I have my multimeter on the spring of the back of the points, and I have it on the body, it's only going to beep when these points are closed, which should be there. See? So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave that connected and I'm going to rotate the shaft from the bottom here where the gear is and you're going to hear it going open and closed. Disconnected, connected, disconnected. Now every time the beeping stops, it's going to fire. When the beeping is on, it's building up current, power, basically. It's charging, if you want to call it. So, charging engine spinning boom it sparks points come and close again charging listen to the sound charging boom the moment the beeping stops this thing fires okay that's very important now because we know that the engine is where we want it to fire and that this engine the distributor rotates in a clockwise fashion all right now i have this in my hand but you would do this with this in the dis in the engine all right i'm just going to imagine this is in your engine right now and it's fully pressed all the way down all right 
We have our multimeter set up. We know we have it right because it's going. It 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 beeps when it's off the high spot, and it disengages. You got to have it going on and off like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the body of the distributor because you can't do this in the engine. It's locked onto the cam. So this is going to be fixed. What you want to do is we're going to rotate the body of the distributor to where the points just open. We know the engine's stuck in the position now where it's going to fire. What we're going to do now is we're going to simulate the firing almost backwards. And if you don't understand it, just follow what I'm doing or try it. If the rotor is turning this way under normal operating circumstances, which is clockwise, then we know we need to rotate the body counterclockwise to simulate it running. Okay, so what you want to do is you want those points to be open, I mean to be touching, beeping, and you want to slowly turn the body while it's in the engine to the moment those points disconnect and you can do a few tests you can go back make it beep keep finding that sweet spot exactly where that those points open just by using a continuity test lock it down it's important lock the distributor down at that point okay we're gonna go back to the uh, to the actual boat alright so I've done exactly what I just showed you with the rotor off on this engine um, the timing mark as I showed you earlier is just ready to fire this one's been set up all right now look at this this is important we used cylinder one uh, which is usually what the timing pointer is set on um, for as well but that's getting a little technical that's why there's two TDC's but basically because we were using the spark hole from cylinder one to get the compression stroke and line the engine up just to the point where we wanted to fire then we came over here and did a continuity test between these two points and we rotated it the distributor clockwise until it was beeping until it just stopped beeping now what you want to do is put the rotor on wherever this groove is now it might be pointing this way it could be this way it doesn't really matter put it on in its groove try and do this okay the rotor is now on now take the cap in the orientation that it goes in because it's only going to go on one way usually there's a cutout you see there's a big flat cutout and that's going to match with that right if i put this cap down just loose for now right over there and i look at where that rotor is pointing keep your eye on this mark over here okay when we put the cap on it's in it's aligned just off this wire over here all right sometimes it points right at it sometimes it doesn't but wherever the rotor is pointing to the cap the terminal in the cap that's the wire that now needs to go to that cylinder that we used you could use any one of these cylinders to set the timing technically if you had the marks on the flywheel but you could you could use any cylinder in an engine if you had enough marks on there all engine builders use one that's why everyone uses one um, it's just you know it's cheaper to make one notch out of a pulley than four or six or eight or however many anyways so I know this is very laborious and it's very long-winded but you know you guys obviously have no clue how this works and I'm trying to give you some understanding I will shoot a very short video just with a meat but anyways, okay, for the 500th time, the engine is on the compression stroke on one, it's ready to fire, the dots, the marks are about a half inch before they meet the zero and the pointer on the pulley. We've set the points to just disconnect, just, just, just where it disconnects. We've locked the bolt down over here, now the body, the body can't rotate, it's stuck. We look down at the top of the distributor cap and we can see it's, the angle's a little off but we can see that the rotor is pointing kind of that way and when you put the cap on that's almost in line with this plug this terminal because the rotor is the distributor is distributing spark it's going from the middle and out to wherever it is in its cycle so what we can do now is we can put the spark plug back 
spark plug back in number one all right she's ready to go boom at least one is tighten that up put your wire on and there it is all right now i know this engine's firing order is one three four two all right now i just set up number one over here i know the distributor is going clockwise so all i need to do now is go one three follow the lead see it goes to number three then the distributor is going to move around it's going to go to four that lead goes to the cylinder on the end and two so i don't need to time anymore i'm done snug everything down don't forget the rotor and um, this is going to get your engine running absolutely no doubt about it now you might be a few degrees out but you're going to get it to run to where you can get it to idle get a timing light on there and what you'll do with the timing light is you'll undo this nut a little and you'll kind of fine tune it so that's the very long-winded way i'm going to make it a lot easier in a quick video uh, you'll find it in the description below uh, I'm just going to cut straight to the details and skip all the theory. Um, so I hope that helped. Now this applies to any engine. Inline, you basically bring it up to the compression stroke on any cylinder. One. Get the mark to be about a half inch before the zero on the body of the block. Rotate your distributor to where the points are have just opened using continuity. Lock it down, put the rotor in. Wherever that rotor is pointing, that needs to go to the cylinder that you used with your finger to test for the compression stroke and set it up on the marks. And then you just follow your engine's firing order in the correct direction around the cap and put it into all the right holes, uh, spark plug wise, and you're good to go. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to make a very quick one right now. Um, and that'll help you guys get your timing set right on these things.